This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to wrap up our talk on transitions by talking about importing and using third-party transitions. Maybe it's a matte key that you created inside of Adobe's After Effects or maybe it's a matte transition you purchased from one of our great partner companies, Rampant Design Tools. And in this lesson, I'm going to use a transition from Rampant Design Tools 4K Matte Transitions Catalog and I'm going to show you how we're going to get that into Media Composer and we're going to work with it as a matte key in our timeline to create a very cool transition. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, now before we do get rolling, I want to head over to the Rampant Design Tools website to the Transitions category, and you'll see that inside of the Transitions category, we have a pretty good amount of different bundles that we can choose from, everything from matte transitions, film light transitions, paint stroke transitions, and even soft matte transitions. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that with some of these, you're going to utilize them using transfer modes. You'll basically take the clip, put it onto V2, V3, or V4, apply the transfer mode, and what's going to happen is, is that when the transition happens, based on the brightness of the element, that's what's going to be used for the transition. Now, we're going to talk specifically about matte transitions, because like I said in the intro, these are things that you can create in After Effects, they could be given to you by a graphic or motion graphic designer, or you might purchase them from Rampant Design Tools. And what's going to happen when you make the purchase, and in this case we're using uh, matte transitions number one you will see that when you come over to the Rampant Design Tools website, you're going to have 99 different elements to work with at resolutions from 2K all the way up to 5K. Now, obviously, the price of the bundle will vary based on the resolution that you choose. Now, once you've downloaded the elements and you're ready to work with them, you'll see that I have them here inside this folder. If I come over to any one of these, and on the Mac, I simply select one and hit the space bar, you'll see that everything looks really gray when we take a look at it. We see the transition come in and then everything transitions to white. So what exactly is going on here? Well, this is actually something that's very clever about how these transitions were designed by the team at Rampant Design Tools. They're actually designed with alpha channels. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, what does that mean for me as a Media Composer editor? Well, to be honest, it actually doesn't really mean anything for you as a Media Composer editor. But what it does do is it not only lets you, the Media Composer editor, work with these transitions, but it also makes it very easy for After Effects artists, Premiere editors, and editors in other nonlinear editing applications and compositing applications to work with these elements as track mats. Because when you're using them as track mats, you can actually select the Luma channel or the alpha channel. So now, like I said, in this case, we're just going to be importing this as a flat element with no key information, and we can just really pick any one of them. So why don't we now command or alt tab into Media Composer. Now I've got some basketball footage here that we can use for our transition. Very nice. And let's get our clip into Media Composer. I'm just going to come to the source browser. We're going to do this as a link to now you remember I said in the intro that we don't want to bring in our matte element with our transition because that's really more so for compositing and other applications like Premiere. But I'm just going to select one of these clips and I'm going to say link in the bottom right hand corner and you'll see that once I bring the clip in, it still has that matte key information with it. And you'll see that if I call it up into the preview window, I can't actually see anything because of course the alpha channel, there we go is being taken into consideration. Ideally, I'd rather just have this as a black and white element. So how do we get around this? What I'm going to do is just delete that element. I'm going to come back to the source browser here. 
and let's head down to our link options. Inside of our link options, we're going to head to the link options appropriately enough. And right down here, you'll see that we have the alpha channel. Right now, I'm going to switch it from do not invert black equals opaque to be ignore. Now, I can simply say OK. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to link back to this clip. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that what might happen is, is that the source browser might go through and refresh everything in the window once you make that switch. So obviously, keep that in mind. Now, what it's also done by doing that is it's forgotten which clip I had selected. So I'm just going to pick another one at random here. We'll just pick number 27. I'm going to say link, and you'll now see that it has appeared in my bin as an actual proper matte key element. There we go. Very cool. Okay. Now, let's get in and let's work with this in our timeline. We can, of course, get in and transcode this if we wanted to, but I don't necessarily need to in this case for the purposes of showing you how this works. So let's call up a couple clips here. Sure, let's call up our basketball at the fence shot. I'm going to drop this in. Now, this is going to be the clip that's going to have our outgoing frames in it to go into the incoming frames of our next shot. Now, this is going to be important for the sake of aligning things and then keeping everything straight. Okay. Now, what I need to do at this point to do this transition is I'm going to need two more video layers. One for the video that's going to be the incoming video or the next shot and one for the actual transition itself. So let's create a couple video layers, Command or Control Y on the keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our Rampant Design Tools element here, and I'm just going to mark the area of the actual transition right there. Now you'll see it's only a second long. Now we can get in and change that in just a second here. So I'm just going to come in, and we're going to drop that clip down onto video track number three, just like such, okay? Now, it's okay that it cuts to it and then goes to white. I'm not going to worry about that for right now. But let's now take our clip that's going to be the incoming clip. And why don't we go with, maybe we can even go with the layup there. Sure, let's go with that one here. Okay. It's actually a slam dunk, not a layup. I want to make sure that I get my basketball terms correct here. There we go. And I'm going to start it about there. Okay. Let's drop that into video layer number two. Now, it's important to put the transition down to begin with so you can see exactly how much media you're going to need when lining your clip up. That's going to be the incoming clip on video track number two. All right, so let's head into the effects palette where we're going to head is down to the key section and I want the matte key effect. We're going to take the matte key effect and we're going to drag it and drop it down onto the transition layer, not into any of the other layers, onto the actual transition layer. Now, we haven't seen anything happen because I'm not on the shot and I'm not monitoring that layer. But you'll see as soon as I get there and I view video layer three, we now have this shot basically ready to go. Okay. Now you'll notice that what happens is, is that the shot starts on this shot, then it cuts to the other shot, transitions back to the shot I had before, and then cuts to our basketball player doing the slam dunk, which is not what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, let's step into effects mode and we're going to select our effect and I'm going to head up and we're basically going to invert this key. So this way, what's going to happen is it's going to stay on our basketball players until the transition happens, shots going to open up and then our basketball player is going to do his slam dunk. Now, of course, depending on your system, you might get real-time playback depending on the size that you're working in. You know, obviously, you know, HD, 2K, 4K. I'm just going to hit play here, and you'll see there's the transition basically all set to go. Now, one thing that I also really like about working with these rampant design tools elements is that if I want to get in and make any tweaks, I can actually do that very easily. Let me show you what I mean. That was a, you know, pretty cool, pretty straightforward transition. But what I want to do is I'd really like to get in and soften those edges, soften the edges of that transition. So let's step into our effect, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a blur to this clip before we actually do the matte key. So let's head up to the BCC category of effects, and I'm going to head to the, appropriately enough, the blur section that's located right towards the top of the effects palette. There we go, blur. And I think I'm just going to choose a fairly standard blur. Let's just choose a Gaussian blur here, okay? We're going to take that, drag it, and drop it down onto our clip. Once it's on our clip, we're just going to step into effects mode. Now you'll see that I can actually come in and use the on-screen widgets to create our blur, okay? Now all I'm going to do is just step out and take a look at what we have now. We now have a very cool soft edge transition that happens, just like that. 
Now in this case, because we got a couple effects stacked up on top of each other, I'm just gonna give it a quick render here. And once it's done, let's just step back. I'm just gonna hit play. And basically what we've just done is taken one effect and made two effects out of it. And what's very cool to consider is that not only will this apply to this package that we have, but any of the other rampant design tools, matte based transition packages will work exactly the same. So what was originally 100 effects is only gonna end up being so much more. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.